this this instalment, uh, let's get involved. Uh, we'll kind of be talking mainly about what Connor and I both do in our counties and kind of how we can grow kind of disability football uh, in Middlesex and London. But this would also apply for pretty much every county across the country. Um, because I know that we might have a few people from outside of London and Middlesex on the call. So Connor, if you want to yeah. go over to the next slide. So some of you will know who Connor and I are, and some of you might not. Um, so just to kind of give you a background, um, I'm, I'm from Middlesex FA. Um, I've kind of recently joined in June, so some of you might not know who I am. Um, and Connor is from London FA. Oh, Connor, the, the slides. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I can no, kind no. of talk through it while Connor gets them back up. Uh, but Connor and I, although our roles, are, our role titles are different, uh, we pretty much do the same work. Um, kind of the aim of our role is to grow the delivery of disability football. Um, this could be uh, recreational football um, or it could be affiliated football. So. And more that kind of competitive side of football, as well as kind of getting everyone, getting disabled people playing in the county. We also want to kind of develop and grow competitive pathways for disabled people. And um, so whether that's kind of pan disability leagues or that could be impairment specific uh, leagues and competitions, as well as kind of getting players involved. We also want to try and grow uh, the opportunities that disabled people have in terms of our workforce. So, you know, we want to drive, um, drive coaches, referees, young leaders, get people involved in our youth council that do have a disability. Um, and as well as getting them into the workforce, then hopefully getting them out and putting their skills to good use in, in clubs and, and organizations. And then kind of recently, our roles have kind of expanded to not only just working with growing disabled, uh, disability football in the county and um, we also kind of work on um, kind of ensuring workforce opportunities supportive and inclusive for diverse populace, populations as well. So mainly we, we kind of head up disability football in both our counties. Do you wanna... So just to kind of run through kind of the agenda uh, for the workshop today, um, I'll be talking a little bit on affiliation and recreational football and kind of what the differences are between them two and kind of how your organizations um, or clubs can get involved in that. Um, Connor and I will talk about our leagues because um, each county will have a different kind of structure for their disability leagues that they run. Uh, we'll touch slightly on talent ID, uh, workforce opportunities, uh, and then kind of things that we're doing um, in 2021. Uh, around our disability focus group and launching a wear inclusive badge and um, so we'll talk a bit more about them later on. So in terms of growing disability football um, and how your organisations or clubs can get involved in in kind of growing disability football we kind of have two main forms of playing football in our counties so one of them is affiliated football so this is more for clubs and organizations that are looking to um, kind of go down the more competitive route. Um, not always, um, but most of the, the teams that are affiliated will usually play in our disability leagues. Um, it kind of provides kind of a quality insurance as well between yourselves as a club or an organization um, and the county as well. So you're kind of recognized that, you know, your club is, doing everything that you need to do to run the game safely for players um, and anyone involved in the club. As well as kind of being affiliated, there is kind of benefits towards doing that. Um, as I say, one of them is being able to take part in, in com competition pathways. And um, that could be the, you know, the Sunday leagues that we run or the other leagues that we run as to, you know, county cups. Um, and then obviously you get support from, you know, your county FA, um, that whether that be Connor and I, or it could be kind of on our football services team. Um, so they kind of deal with, you know, safeguarding, discipline, um, different things around that, insurance. Um, 
but also kind of one of the main benefits to being affiliated is being able to access things like our charter standard awards. Um, again, these being charter standard, um, they, they bring more benefits as well. Um, and there's kind of different levels towards that. But if you do want to know more information about being charter standard, um, just drop Connor or I um, an email or a call afterwards and we can kind of give you a bit more information on that. And then kind of different from affiliation football, we have the more recreational football. Um, we kind of term this as turn up and play. Um, so this is more for those clubs and organizations that have players that maybe can't commit to, you know, going to the, the weekly session every single week, or they don't particularly want to go down the competitive, uh, you know, pathway. So, you know, they just want to turn up with their friends every week, play a little bit of football, um, and kind of the commitment doesn't need to be there completely. Um, this is where Connor and I kind of differ as counties. Um, so in Middlesex, we do actually have turn up and play funding available um, to support clubs and organizations to start new sessions. Um, that could be up to 400 pound. Um, unfortunately, London FA can't um, kind of support this at the minute, but what we can do in both counties is if you did want to set up recreational football, we can look for other sources of funding and support you to kind of get these sessions up and running. And then obviously provide that county FA support as well following that. Um, we, when it comes to recreational football, it can stay as recreational football. Um, but uh, we've kind of found that a lot of these recreational football sessions then kind of want to lead into being more affiliated football and then going down the competitive route. Um, so that's obviously something that was as a county FA can, can support um, and yeah, continue to kind of grow the game in, in both the counties. Um, Connor, I don't know if you wanted to touch on anything that I've said, um, anything different that I've said about kind of growing disability football for players. Uh, no, I think, I think as you already said, it's important to have two formats because a lot of people just want to play it for fun and just want to come along and, and just meet their friends and have, so I think that's really important to have the two strands. Um, as Lauren said, unfortunately, the we don't have the funding, but we can't, my job is to sit down with organisations and, and get some funding. Um, and we, we can be, we can write letters of support. We can, we can actually support with writing the bed for with you so so that's the kind of the route we're going down um but yeah definitely it's i think it's really important we, we want to speak to more rec recreational centers um mm -hmm. because i think with us linking up with a county it's good because we know where everything's happening um and then we can push it out to parents or other clubs and we kind of can get a bit of a, a database in london and we know where all the sessions are so It'd be great to become like a if, if you do run recreational football and become a partner of ours um, and then we can work together to really promote the sessions that'd be the kind of only thing i would say around the rec rec side again yeah and in terms of like the the football sessions as well um kind of the term disability can be you know it's it's very wide ranging so you know we can have impairment specific sessions we can have pan disability we can have more um long-term health condition sessions. So yeah, kind of disability football is kind of very wide ranging um, in terms of what we can offer on a local level. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, you know, with the CP football, uh, is, there, is there any trials that we can go? Uh, uh, yeah. So basically I'm trying to say, is there any trials that we can go and do CP football in a higher level? There, yeah, there is, there is, um, there's like um, uh, development hubs and stuff. But how how old, how old are you? Is that, is that it? Uh, 30, 33. 33. Yeah. So they, these are kind of more working at young, younger age group um, kids, and then kind of progressing them into like, say, the next stage of it. And so they kind of work with maybe 12, 13, 14 year olds, and then progress them into maybe youth foot. Youth yeah. football ends with one eighteen nineteen. Not not a doubt, but yeah, definitely. If um, yeah. it might be worth speaking to. John. I don't know if you're on the the course with John later on. So John's doing some stuff around talent ID. Um, okay. So he's on later on today. I don't know if you're on that 
that workshop. It might be good to ask some of that stuff to mm. John. Um, Thank you. Uh, but there is, to, I'm sorry to answer your question, there is people who are scouting, looking at players. Um, so yeah, definitely if, if, you, if, you, if you know of any players yourself or if, if no, yeah, let, let us, the thing with the first step would be to let us know as a county and then we can speak, yeah. to, we can speak to the talent ID, ID team then. So. Right. I'm quite, I mean, I'm quite interested, so to be honest, as myself. Ah, okay, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's kind of, one of the things, yeah, definitely if, if you want to drop myself and Lauren email and we, we can kind of, kind of off, off the call, we can kind of direct you in the right, the right way around that. Um, and we can help, we can help you or support you around that. Thank you very much. No worries. Has it moved on? It hasn't. Sorry. Let me click it again. There we go. There we go. <laughs> no. um, so just kind of following on from kind of regular football activity and um, I've kind of touched on this briefly before but we do have uh, kind of local competitive leagues that we run in both our counties um, some of you on this call might actually already be involved in some of them leagues um, so yeah we have different leagues for different counties and every county FA will have similar leagues but they might look different um, as you can tell between Middlesex FA's leagues and then uh, London's leagues, they are slightly different. Um, in, in Middlesex, we have a pan disability league and we have four divisions within that currently um, and about 20 teams. Kind of the idea for um, the pan league kind of going forward is to increase the amount of uh, ages. So currently it's an adults league, but kind of the aim of every county FA is to have provision for competitive leagues for um, adults but also uh, youth provision as well so over the next kind of year or two that will be something that I specifically will be looking at um, within that league and hopefully in also doing a female friendly uh, division as well um, as well as the pan league we also run a mental health league so this is for um, anyone that is a mental health service user um, and then we have the SEN schools league and um, at the bottom it does say that all Teams must be affiliated to join the leagues. Um, with the SEN Schools League, this actually doesn't apply. Um, it's more of a uh, friendly competition, um, nothing too serious. That takes place every every Wednesday, and it'll be starting again in, in January. So any SEN school, um, any, any schools that have an SEN department can take part in this league. Very, um, we have different levels. Um, and we have mixed and boys and girls. So, yeah, if anyone wants more information about the, the, any of the leagues that I run in Middlesex, just feel free to give me a call or an email um, and I can give you more information. Uh, but, Connor, did you just want to touch um, on, on your leagues slightly? Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah as, um, as Lauren was saying, they, uh, the league, they run the Pandas Villa League. We, we were kind of split into two in London. We've got North and South, uh, and there's uh, special leagues, and, and they run one runs at Market Road, the North London Special League, and the South London Special League runs at Long Lane. Um, and basically, with them is uh, they're, they're run by two different organisations. So uh, North South, North London Special League run that that one, and then South London Special League run that. And we we work with them. We have, they, they sanction through us, they, they affiliate uh, teams through us. Um, so that's how they run. Um, so yeah, if you're keen to get involved in any of them, let me know. Uh, we, we've got the divisions in that as well. So, um, so like the league, uh, championship, premiership, so the three levels of, so it suits everybody's ability. Um, and then the, the schools league runs under the South London Special League and they run a secondary and primary school divisions. Um, really, really good. So that, that actually is affiliated now through the schools FA, um, so, so they, they, they do all that. It used to come through London FA, but now it's, it's done through the schools FA, uh, inner schools, inner London schools FA. Um, and then the last one is the London Grassroots League, which is our mental health one, which at the minute we've got 10 teams, but it's currently stopped because of uh, COVID-19, uh, but we hope to get back up and running the new year. Um, it's different from the other leagues. It runs at various venues. So there's like teams have got like a home venue. Each of the teams maybe got like a home venue or maybe two or three teams might play out a, a certain uh, venue. So I think there's maybe four or five different venues that they play at. Um, but yeah, that's that that's run kind of on a weekly as the teams organize the fixtures themselves. 
um, and we, we support them with the kind of the more kind of admin side of the league and getting getting it sanctioned and, and affiliated. Um, but yeah, as as Lauren said, any questions, any M leagues, or if you know if any teams want to enter, or even if if, if it's just a player as well, if, if you're just a player and you don't play in any leagues at the moment and you want to get involved, let us know and we can put you in touch with some of the teams in the league. No. Okay, so we've just kind of touched on um, kind of what we do locally. Um, this video is just kind of give you an idea um, of some of the, the kind of competitions that take place um, nationally. Um, I'll just kind of let the video play because it'll probably give you a better idea rather than me just talking. This is where technology lets you down. <laughs> Let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so moving on to me, is it Lauren, the next one? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so the, so I think we touched on that earlier, uh, uh, one of the questions around the talent pathway. So at the minute, um, there's a disability uh, football performance pathway, and that uh, is kind of to get players to whatever level they want to get on that pathway. Um, so the pathway is is aimed to develop winning England teams. So eventually that will be the end of it. Like like any 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 um football club or team, it's it's to really get the players through to make make them a team that will compete uh, so either country or club. Uh, so that's what this pathway does. It's, it's it's developed to get people into England teams. Um and then so we Within that, we've got the amputee, the blind, CP, cerebral palsy, uh, deaf, partially sighted, and power chair football, which you, you've seen uh, briefly on that video as well. Um, so yeah, at the minute, the FA and uh, County FA deliver a number of local and regional national programs to get players on the pathway. So these are really the first step of getting players on that pathway. Actually, the first, let me go back, the first step would be just getting on the pitch and playing then the next step would be to come into one of these talent hubs um, to get a bit of a feeling what it, it what it's like to play at a higher level. And then from them hubs, then you would you would go into um, some of the development squads. And then from that, you go into some of the international squads. So it's kind of like a pathway up. Um, and it, it, it gives players an opportunity to go from just playing community football into the hubs, into the development centers, and then into eventually hopefully if, if everything went good and, and and they had the talent that they would go into possibly England teams and, and compete for for the country. Um at the minute we've got four um hubs in London. Uh, unfortunately all, as you probably know already all these have stopped currently um because of COVID nineteen but we're hoping to get them up and running next year. So you, I'll, I'll not read them all out but you can see there like uh, North London, the South London, East London, West London. Um, you can see the venues that they're out there as well. Um, but if anybody wants, has any players that they think within the club that might, you know, fall into that, um, you no, know, might go into one of the hubs uh, or just wants to know more about the hubs, get in touch with me and Lauren. Uh, we can give you a lot more information on that. Uh, also today as well, later on today at six o'clock. So, so from six o'clock to half seven, we're going to provide more information on this. Um, so I think John's going to do a presentation on that, John Whittenden. Um, so if, if people got interested in that, I, I recommend just um, logging into that workshop later on today and get some more information. 
Um, workforce, workforce, uh, sorry, opportunities. Uh, so at the minute, or is develop people to progress within the workforce. So that could be across the board. That could be coaches, referees, young leaders. It could be even admin working in clubs and uh, getting involved, involved in boards or councils. Uh, we just want people to get involved in, in the game. Um, and as, as kind of FAs, we're going to work with people and we, we can support you to do that. So if there's any people who have an interest in that, once again, get in touch with us and we can point you in the, in the right direction. Um, some of the courses that we're, we're doing at the minute, um, we've got like uh, the, the referee and coaching courses. So kind of FA can, can actually deliver some of them courses bespoke. So we can add some extra support. Um, so we've got also a workshop on refereeing and coaching later on today, so we can go more detail into that. Um, but yeah, we also can provide discounted rates for some if, if we've got funding. So what we've done in, in some...